Tonight on Newswatch, find out the rising death toll of the South Carolina flood. And hear how a London hospital is trying to cure blindness. I'll have the recap of the Cyclones volleyball game in sports. Plus, we have very nice temperatures in the forecast. We'll have all the details coming up. Stay tuned. You're watching Newswatch 18. Good evening. Welcome to October 6th edition of Newswatch. I'm Dakota Carthen. And I'm Mackenzie Oregon. Thanks for joining us. Hurricane Joaquin hit the Bahamas with everything it had yesterday, causing a total blackout in three of the most severely battered islands. The storm has moved east since it waged war on the east coast of the United States this weekend. While the cell may have left to terrorize new coastal communities, the states aren't home free yet. Flooding, rather than the hurricane itself, has been the biggest source of damage in the states. Some parts of Georgia, which wasn't technically hit by Joaquin, received up to 10 inches of rain in less than a day. This much water in such a short period can oversaturate the ground and cause fast-acting disasters like flash floods and landslides. So far, the death toll is at 17, and the president has officially declared a state of emergency in South Carolina. At least 12 people have died in the state of South Carolina this weekend after a terrible downpour hit the state. The flooding caused dams to overflow, bridges to collapse, and has left nearly 40,000 people without drinking water. Parts of the state got up to 20 inches of rain after the storm, lasted a full week. South Carolina's governor, Nikki Haley, called the storm a once in a millennium downpour. The National Guard is continuing to rescue people as the death toll climbs. Senator Rand Paul told CNN Tuesday the U.S. should no longer be fighting the war in Afghanistan after the U.S. military strike hit a hospital in that country. The GOP presidential candidate questions President Obama, the objective, and the mission, and the reasons why Americans are still bombing in Afghanistan. While the U.S. had a clear-cut mission in Afghanistan following the attacks of 9-11, Paul, with his non-interventionist foreign policy views, argues that has been gone for many years now. General Mil Mills issued a recall Monday of nearly 1.8 million boxes of Cheerios and Honey Nut Cheerios due to an accidental gluten in cereals. Some boxes labeled gluten-free accidentally contained wheat products. The boxes were made in July at a facility in California. The company sends its deepest apologies to its customers and even sent out a tweet about the recall in hopes to make more people aware of the situation. London's Moorfield Eye Hospital is well on the way to curing blindness. Last month, a woman with macular degeneration was the subject of an experimental procedure involving stem cells. The one to two hour operation places a specialized patch at the, back, at the back of the eye. This patch contains pigment cells critical to a person's sight. The eye's own cells are damaged in an eye with ma macular degeneration. As they deteriorate, so does a person's vision. The procedure works against both types of macular degeneration and has so far been deemed successful. The full trial lasts for 18 months and will determine the overall legitimacy of stem cell based macular degeneration research. As announced on Monday, Disney theme parks are considering changing the admission price for visitors. The parks have had a record attendance the past three years, with numbers expected to grow with the opening of the Star Wars attraction in the near future. The new pricing model would look similar to airline tickets. Lower prices would be offered in the off-season for the parks to attract more guests during that time. If changes are made to the pricing, this will be the first time in 60 years Walt Disney Parks made a change to the admission prices. Extreme athlete Johnny Strange died last week while performing a wingsuit jump in Switzerland. Shortly after posing, posting a photo of himself flying low over a towering forest to Instagram, Strange crash landed into the Alps. Strange has been wingsuit flying for years, something he picked up after he could no longer grow as a mountain climber. Six years ago, at the age of 17, he became the youngest person to ever scale Mount Everest, along with the highest peaks on all the other continents. A representative for the Switzerland police in the state where Strange crashed reports that the cause of the crash was most likely the strong winds and inclement weather at the time. Strange had expressed some concern about the conditions but decided to go through with the jump anyway. Friends of the American Adventurer held a ceremony at Zuma Beach in Malibu to honor his memory. We are now joined by Ben Elliott at the desk with sports. How's Paul Rhodes' job security looking after last weekend's game? A little bit brighter, but not by much. I'll tell you more about the football game after the break. Stay tuned, you're watching Newswatch. The Cyclone football team hosted Kansas this past weekend, 
with Paul Rhodes on the hot seat. Lily Foucher has the breakdown. It's a beautiful day for some football. The 1-2 and two Cyclones are looking for their first conference win against the Kansas Jayhawks, who are 0-3. The Cyclones are looking to improve after their last game, which ended in a double overtime loss in Toledo. It feels good to be 1-0 and in the Big 12 Conference, says Coach Paul Rhodes. This is the Cyclones' first win in a conference opener since 2002, which finally ended a nine-game conference losing streak since last season. Sam Richardson had a good game, throwing for a total of 269 yards with two touchdowns and two interceptions. This moved him into second place in ISU's career touchdown passes list with 44 touchdowns. This is Richardson's 16th career game with multiple touchdown passes, and he is now the third cycle with 500 career completions. Richardson connected with sophomore receiver Alan Lazard for a team-high six receptions for 75 yards. In addition to Richardson's good game, Mike Warren set an ISU freshman record with 175 rushing yards, which was the most rushing yards by a Cyclone since November 18, 2006. Warren is the first Cyclone freshman to record back-to-back 100-yard -back games. <laughs> On defense, Good job Dylan Lowry had a career high in tackles with a total of eight tackles and two sacks. Ryan Peavy had his first double-digit tackle game of his career with ten tackles. Harvey in his post-game press conference said, We just stuck to our plan, so we just wanted to stop the runner. What a great day to be a Cyclone as Iowa State put up a season-high 38 points to Kansas's 13. Next week, the Cyclones will continue their conference season against a strong Texas Tech team on the road. With ISU TV, I'm Lily Foshe. The Cyclones will face the Texas Tech Red Raiders, who are 12.5 point favorites this Saturday in Lubbock. The Iowa State women's soccer team also hosted the Jayhawks this past weekend, but were unable to share in the victory. The Cyclones fell to Kansas Sunday, losing 4-0. According to Cyclones.com, head coach Tony Minata is already looking to the future, saying, from our standpoint, it's back to the drawing board on Tuesday's practice. It'll be open competition for starting spots again, and we'll put the players out there that we feel, us, we feel give us the best chance to win. The Cyclones move to 5-8-0 on the season with the game at Texas next up this Friday. The Iowa State women's cross country team was also in action this weekend, racing at the Greater Louisville Classic this past Saturday in Louisville, Kentucky. According to Cyclones.com, Junior Perez Rodich led the Cyclones in all times, running the race in 17 minutes and 5 seconds, placing her fourth overall individually. The sixth-ranked Cyclones finished second in team scoring, trailing only number eight ranked Michigan. The team will finish up their regular season October 16th at the Wisconsin Adidas Invitational in Madison, Wisconsin. The volleyball team returns home tomorrow after being on the road the past few games. The Cyclones will take on Kansas State at 6.30 at Hilton Coliseum. The Cyclones are coming fresh off their first Big 12 loss of the year after falling to Texas this past Saturday. The Cyclones, who are 9-5 and five on the season, are looking to make a mid-season run that will move them up the conference ladder. Iowa State will be looking for strong performances by team leaders Morgan Kurt and Caitlin Nolan tomorrow in an effort to get back on track. Finally, the long wait is almost over. Basketball season is almost here. The athletic department announced today the details of Hilton Madness which will take place on Friday, October 16th at Hilton Coliseum. It's Cyclone fans' first chance to see new coach Steve Prohm and his players in action. The unofficial kickoff to basketball season will include hanging of the 2015 NCAA tournament banners, a three-point shootout for both the men and women's basketball team, and a dunk contest. Admission is free to all, and doors will be open stu to students 15 minutes prior to the general public. I know I'm not the only one ready for another year filled with Hilton Magic. And that's all I have for sports. Brandon, is this weather going to hold out for the weekend? It is. We've actually got some rain coming up for uh, the next few days. We'll have all your details coming up in just a few minutes. Welcome back, everybody. We've got a very pleasant night out there. 63 degrees, light wind southwest at 5 miles an hour, so it's feeling pretty pleasant out there. As we look ahead to the future, we're going to see these above average temperatures stick around throughout the week. Now, keep in mind, our average first freeze is usually late September. So uh, it's already one week into October, and we're seeing these almost summer-like temperatures, so it's very nice. Hold on to it while you still can. Rain will try to make a damper on Thursday, but it should move out of here quickly, and we're looking at a nice weekend ahead for us. Temperatures out there are in the mid-60s, 63 in Ottumwa, 66 in Des Moines, and 63 in Ames. We've got some low-hanging clouds out there, though. 
but we're starting to see some clearing out to the west, especially in southwest and northwest. We've actually got a uh, very weak cold front starting to move across into our state, and that's not going to bring us any showers or rain, but it won't really do any effect on the uh, temperatures either, but it's just going to kind of pull those clouds away, and we'll look at some partly cloudy skies tomorrow, some sun filtering through, uh, and as we go on through the night, tomorrow night, we'll start to see some chances for storms, especially going into Thursday. Some of those could have some rumbles in them, but it's looking to stay uh, mainly nice after we clear out of that. 51 in Marshalltown for lows tonight, 53 in Des Moines, and 53 in Ottumwa. Tomorrow, as again, that cold front won't do uh, much damage. We'll still be sitting in the mid-70s tomorrow, 76 in Ottumwa, 74 in Marshalltown, and 74 in Fort Dodge. So let's let's bring it all together. 51 for the low tonight here in Ames. It'll be a mild night, mostly cloudy. Those clouds should start to move off uh, tomorrow and build back in for Thursday. Those winds will be light and variable as that cold front does move through. Tomorrow, 73 degrees, partly sunny, and again, those storms will try to make their way into uh, the night tomorrow night into Thursday. You see that 50% chance of thunderstorms, 74 degrees for a high on Thursday. We'll cool off slightly on Friday. It'll still be sunny, but 63 for the high. But you notice very nice temperatures ahead, 80 degrees on Sunday, and then again, mid-70s to, to start your week off. It's looking very nice. And we'll, we'll be right back. We're going to send it to break. This past Sunday, the award-winning musical 42nd Street came to our very own Stevens Auditorium in Ames. The story follows a hopeful young actress's journey from a chorus girl to the lead role. The musical delighted audience members with tap dancing and catchy tunes. The show started at two and nearly brought a full house. The musical has won two Tonys, one for best musical and one for best revival of a musical. 13-year-old YouTube star Caleb Lone died this week from an undetected medical condition. The medical examiner's office says the cause of death is pending, but it was most likely a heart condition known as cardiomyopathy. His family claims to have no prior knowledge of Caleb having any previous medical conditions. The medical emergency came as a complete shock to them and to all of their loved ones. They asked for privacy, love, and support as they move through the grieving process. This past Friday night, hundreds of students gathered at the Memorial Union for this year's second ISU After Dark. The night was filled with pictures at the photo booth, bingo, and crafts in the workspace, all enjoyed by students for free. The highlight of the event was the guest comedian, Eliza Schertzlinger. She's the winner of NBC's hit show, Last Comic Standing. She was a big here at Iowa State. The next ISU After Dark will be held Friday, November 6th. And the end of the Hunger Games series is upon us. The trailer for Mockingjay Part 2 was released today and it has all of its 60,000 viewers saying, don't leave us Katniss. The series as a whole is a grim one, but this last installment leaves the audience feeling like there really is a chance that the good guys won't win in the end. The trailer includes several shots of main characters looking sad, which can't be a good sign. Of course, we won't reveal any spoilers for those of you who haven't read the trilogy, but we will say that the much-anticipated finale will bring justice to the original literary work. That's all for tonight's edition of Newswatch. Join us on Wednesday for more news, weather, and sports. Until next time, have a wonderful night.